everyone, and welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host, and joining me today is my special guest co-host and friend, Mike Lidskin of Twirl Radio. Hi, Mike. Hey, Pam. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. How about yourself? Pretty good. It's finally cooled down. You know, yesterday it was 110 degrees, and then by the time it got dark, like three hours later, it went down uh, to 70. It went from 110 to 70, like a 40 degree drop, and say it's just gonna be perfect, like sunny, 80 degrees. I went out for a bike ride, so I'm en- I'm enjoying spring now that I'm not not roasting. Yeah, I would imagine 110. I mean, that that's something. not normal for California, is it? Uh, it would be normal for us maybe once in a while in July or August, not first week of June. It's just a little <laughs> extraordinary here. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> and we've been and we've been battling with the opposite of it being cold here, and Man. recently in the last couple of days it's been you know perfect weather in this it's say upper sixties and lower seventies, so I've that been happy with nice. that. Mm-hmm. I would yeah. think that. Hey, con- congratulations to you guys on your Chicago Blackhawks. Way to go for you guys. Oh, my God. Thank God people do not videotape me when I'm watching a Hawks game. <laughs> Let me tell you. I know that my my neighbors must hate me, and my dog definitely hates when I'm watching the Blackhawks. She will not oh, even no. come near me. She hears the music <laughs> starting in the beginning and runs out of the room. Runs <laughs> out of the room. She just That's she hilarious. can't handle me yelling, and I'm yelling either because I'm happy or I'm yelling because I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. And, and last night was pretty intense. I mean, they went into two overtimes before they finally won. Wow! Wow! So you put your dog through the ringer on that one. Oh, my gosh, you have no idea. I was sitting, I was standing, I was in front of my TV. I went back to sitting, I was up standing, I was back yelling. And and the thing is, you know, the game's not over till it's over. Till you see that counter go down to zero, it's not over. <laughs> right. um, at seven seconds, 7.9 seconds left of the game, the Hawks were winning. And at that moment, the Kings scored, and that's how we ended up in two OTs. Wow, wow. That's yeah. pretty intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's very dramatic and probably makes for some great television. Oh, I'm sure it does. I, it was funny because I was tweeting all this stuff with with fellow Blackhawks fans, and those that were not um, actually started watching the game because of what we were tweeting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you're now an ambassador for hockey. <laughs> yeah. So it should be pretty interesting now they play the Bruins, and I, I, I guess, I guess oh, they're pretty they're pretty hard, you know, to a team to beat. So it should be interesting. So it'll be a lot of uh, yelling from my end as well. You're a poor dog. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know, but what are you going to do? It's It's only, you know, one time a year I do this so she can live with it. Yeah, but, exactly. <laughs> Today we should have an extremely interesting show considering our who our guest is. Um we welcome the award winning musician, video producer, performer, and digital storyteller Andrew Potter, whose one man show is called The Road to High Street. So welcome Andrew and I hope you're a hockey fan and it's a Blackhawks one at that. <laughs> Uh, well, you got me half right. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, sorry, I haven't been following because lately. Who are we contending with now in the hockey finals? Um, the Blackhawks and the Bruins. I'm sorry, but I am a New Englander by uh, by birth, ah. so I'm going to have to be voting for the Bruins. Sorry about that. <laughs> No rivalry well, going I, on here. <laughs> as long as you don't do it in front of me, then you're okay with me. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, well, the good thing then is the game's not going on during the interview. And that, that would be you're right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, it wouldn't happen in the first place. So, <laughs> and Mike is a Chicago native, so you have to be, you know, going for the Blackhawks. 
Um, <laughs> actually, I'm a Otherwise, California Otherwise, I will not so. forgive you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to a Blackhawks even though I was born in California, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's find out more about Andrew. Um, can we get started with some background for our listeners who may not be familiar with who you are? Um, how did you get started in music, or is music the thing that came first? Well, music is the thing that came first, and music led me in, in so many different directions, which have co- kind of culminated in this current project. But uh, I'm a guitar player, mostly, acoustic guitar player, self-taught, and I've been playing for 40-some years. And uh, I realized very early on, when I was about 14, 15, when I started playing, that it was something that I really loved. Uh, I was really motivated uh, to work at, and I was pretty good. Uh, you know, early on, I was I was pretty good. And uh, so I worked very, very hard at it and uh, developed some proficiency. And kind of the way it led off is um, I auditioned when I was a freshman in college many, many years ago. <laughs> uh, I, I, audi- I auditioned and got into a little children's theater company uh, in Providence, Rhode Island, where I was, where I grew up, mm-hmm. and uh, I played them an old jazz tune on the guitar. It was a song called "Never Swat a Fly." It's like a twenties jazz tune, oh, fun. and uh, it's it's really funny, fun and fun and clever lyrics. And uh, the director loved it, and he saw a couple things in the tune. I didn't know this at the time, but he saw a couple things at the tune which made him love it so much. Um, one of it was, I think, just my style of performing it. You know, it's an old jazz tune, so it's kind of upbeat and it's very happy and uh, uh, it's very syncopated. And the other was is that he saw that it could be very easily mined. Uh, the song was called Never Swat a Fly. and It was basically about a love affair between all these different insects. And <laughs> he saw how it could be very mined by the actors. And mm-hmm. so that's what we turned it into. So this is a, a children's theater company. There were five of us. And I was the music director, and it was a little company called Circus Wagon Theater. And we had two other guys who were on board with us who were gymnasts, and we had two other women who were uh, mimes and dancers. And between the five of us, we would write these skits, and we'd act them out and play them out and throw in some gymnastics and some juggling. And uh, and that tune and that gig is kind of how I got started uh, performing. Wow, very interesting. I mean, if you hadn't been at that children's theater, it may not have taken off that way. Well, it that's true. It it was just it just kind of happened to work out. Um, when I was a freshman in college, this uh, I heard about this theater company, and uh, at the same time, I had met my performing partner uh, Wheeler Cole, who I ended up performing with for about twenty years. Uh, I met him as a freshman at URI, and I met him because it was so funny the way this worked out. I was moving into my dorm, and I met this guy who was riding or trying to ride a unicycle in the hallway. (laughs) And he had another friend with him, and they were just kind of crashing around and and laughing their heads off and and, and struggling and riding. And I I kind of passed by them as I I moved in and, and observed these guys doing this stuff. And I said, oh, oh, that's kind of funny. And then uh, uh, a little bit later, uh, Wheeler, as his, my partner's name is, uh, he also plays the banjo. And I was playing a little bit of banjo at the time. And he heard me playing the banjo. And he came over and he said, hey, you play the banjo. And so that's <laughs> kind of how we hit it off. And uh, just with this music thing going again. Yeah. And, uh, Interesting. And that banjo is how we started Banjos and unicycles, that's that's a lot of fun, banjos and unicycles. It's interesting. I have a friend up here who has a unicycle, and he's a performer, too. His is a mountain unit. He's actually got a knobby wheel on the one on the one wheel on the unicycle. I understand that. I, I used to have one of those myself. In fact, uh, <laughs> we, when we were learning to ride the unicycles, we used to play this game. <laughs> this is going way back. We, we used to play this game where we'd ride around our college campus, and we had this game that we called Blood and Guts. And basically, <laughs> we, we would just pick up a stick, and we'd be two, you know, riding each, we'd be riding unicycles, 
and you just kind of go over and start to harass and poke the other person with the stick. <laughs> oh my gosh! And, well, if it, eventually, you know, it's it's so distracting that you fall off really quickly. But after a while, we got really good at staying on. So it became more and more combative, and it just became excellent training for learning how to ride the unicycle. <laughs> if you can ride, you got some guy whacking you with a stick at the same time. <laughs> You're going to get good after a while. Maybe you should consider a unicycle polo or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's been that's been tried. Yeah, we have tried games like that. That's awesome. <laughs> That is just too funny because all I can picture is, you know, the guys on the horses that are, you know, the knights and whatever when they go stick each other or try to stick each other, and here you are on a unicycle doing the same thing. That's too funny. <laughs> and we, we got we got so good at it that, you know, you can start to kind of lean into delivering your blows, and you can mm-hmm. also anticipate when you're going to get hit, so you can kind of lean into getting hit. So it got very violent after a while, <laughs> which hence the name well, Blood and Guts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, hopefully towards the end when you were really good at it, there wasn't as much blood. <laughs> well, actually, actually, no, that's not true because the next, no. <laughs> the next, the next obvious step after that was to do it on six-foot unicycles. Oh, oh my that's gosh. of course. Of course that would be the next obvious step. Of, of course, right. And the thing about six-foot unicycles is once you learn how to get up there and stay up there, they're actually easier to ride than short unicycles, right? I would never imagine. Gravity, well, your center of gravity is so much higher that, you know, you have much more control. You know, it's like what's oh. easier to balance on your finger, a, 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 pool, a pool stick or a pencil? Ah, oh, right, good point. Right. Right? So you yeah. got the pool stick, you got your center of gravity that's way up high. That's really easy. Well, it's the same thing with the six foot unicycle. So, again, you know, we're playing blood and guts now on the six foot unicycle. <laughs> and again, we're leaning into our body blows and uh, surviving. But then when you do go down, it's a long uh, way yeah. down. <laughs> and you hope, you hope you land on your feet. Right? <laughs> so oh I'm sure God. this is all. This is all great background for your career as it is today. Exactly. Now, you've also talked about juggling, and I read that you practiced in a cemetery cemetery before you became part of the duo with Leo, uh, why can't I talk, Wheeler as the High Street Circus. Yeah, why we, in a cemetery? We started, well, <laughs> you'll, you'll see there's, there's a good reason for this, which I will reveal to you shortly. But uh, <laughs> the, the cemetery, again, was near our college. And uh, when we were in college, we used to hitchhike. In fact, that's where the name High Street came from, because the High Street, High Street, High Street bordered uh, the cemetery. Okay. And we used, to hitchhike, we used to hitchhike down High Street, and we'd stop off at McGrath's Packy. Do you, you know what a Packy is? No. Uh, no, uh, no. It's in it's a New England term. Term. It's short for package store, aka a liquor store. Uh-huh. Ah. Okay. You know, Just you bring something. it out in a in a in a package. But uh, uh, so we used to stop off at the packy, and you know, just just to uh, clear the air here, at the time the drinking age was eighteen, so we were not underage drinkers. Right. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we'd go down legal. and a couple little something, and then we head off to the cemetery which was a nice outdoor private spot to kind of hang out. That's really all it was. Mm-hmm. And we just started hanging out there. And, you know, we'd uh, imbibe a little and we'd discuss and argue and, and, you know, talk about life. And along the way, we just started practicing our juggling. And so we spent a lot of time kind of developing our act and also sort of dreaming about what we might do with it someday uh, in this cemetery in, uh, in Peace Day. 